Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for stopping by today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a never ending card, or as I like to call it, a continuous fidget card, because it's one of those cards that you play with and you can't, it just doesn't stop. It just keeps going. You flip through it and it just repeats and you can continuously fidget for it with it. So if you like someone that loves to play, this is a perfect card as well as someone that just likes to figure out how things work or um, is amazed by different folds, this would be perfect for them. Now, the one that I created is Christmas themed. You obviously don't need to do a Christmas themed one. It could be whatever you want. So I'm taking a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and I'm cutting it at six inches. And I'm going to cut four pieces that are three inches by six inches. Now, this is one of those cards that you need to be very, very, very precise with your measurements because it will affect how it folds and um, the outcome if you are not. So I take my three piece or four pieces here and I like to kind of stack them just to make sure that they're all exactly the same size. This one here happened to be a little bit hair bigger. So I just trimmed it down to make sure that it's all the same size. The next step is to score them. So along the long side, like you see, I am scoring it at one and a half inches and four and a half inches. And along the narrow side, I'm scoring it at one and a half inches. So basically the long part we're scoring it down the middle and then those two end parts we're scoring at a half one and a half inches from each side and then after I score it I like to fold it as you see when you're folding those two small ends in you want to make sure that those ends meet but don't overlap if they happen to overlap you're going to just kind of scooch your fold over a little bit so that it doesn't overlap and that they just meet so for all four pieces, we're doing the exact same scoring. Uh, one and a half inches down the center of the long side and one and a half inches from each end. And you can see that long side, I like to fold it right against the corner of my scoreboard just to make sure that those two end pieces are even with each other. And then I fold those two short ends in, once again, making sure that they meet and they're, they're not overlapping each other an inch and a half down that center, and then an inch and a half and a four and a half inches. So basically one and a half inches from each of those short sides. Every single one of these folds is exactly the same for all four pieces. So we're folding them back in, making sure that they meet, but they don't overlap. And you can see me take my scoring tool and I reinforce those folds once I folded them and I make sure that they are correct and that they're meeting and not overlapping. I like to make sure that those folds are really, really nice in that cardstock before we start gluing things together. I like to do it along the long side, but then I also make sure to do it on my trimmer or on my scoreboard where I don't have some channels for scoring. Now I only press it one way, but if you want to fold your cardstock the other way as well and then reinforce that fold, you absolutely can. Once I have my card glued together, I tend to flip through the different folds and then press down reinforcing the folds, how they're going to fold in that card. But before they're glued together, you just wanna make sure that those folds are nicely in there so that you can see them. When we go in glue here, we're doing the four outside corners. You wanna make sure that that glue doesn't go past that fold line because it's going to affect your card. So I like to put it right in that square but leaving it about a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch away from that fold. And you also wanna make sure that your sides or your corners are all lined up. We wanna be very precise with this gluing because once again, it's going to affect the outcome. If anything happens to be a little bit crooked, it's not gonna work very well. So you saw me put two of those cardstock rectangles horizontally, and then the next layer, we're gluing them vertically on top. So we've got two going one way and two going the other way. And for all of them, we're gluing just that outside square. Nothing else gets glued together when we're putting our cardstock base. And you wanna make sure to be, um, like I said, very precise, make sure everything is lined up. If anything happens to be a little bit crooked or cockeyed, it will be a warped card and it won't fold quite the way it should. So take your time with this and be very, very careful. You noticed just before I flipped my cardstock piece around, this particular cardstock has texture on one side. So I wanted it to be outside. I didn't want it to be those pieces that are glued together. And what I mean by that is I wanted the textured part of the cardstock showing on the outside of the card so that the smooth sides are glued together. 
Now you can see how I'm flipping through here and I was reinforcing the folds as I did it the first time. The next step is to color our watercolor pieces to put our images on. I'm choosing to watercolor my images for this. You absolutely don't have to. You could stamp and color them in the way that you prefer to do it. I wanted to do watercoloring just to make it a little bit easier. So these are the two stamp sets that I'm going to be using. In the end, I actually add another stamp set here. I've got one with a really large font, and then I have one that has a bunch of different Christmassy images that are a perfect size for this particular card. So the very first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do this large font. I'm gonna stamp it and emboss it with gold embossing powder. So I take an embossing ink, which is a sticky ink, and I stamp it onto that watercolor paper and then pour my embossing powder over it. And I'm generous with the embossing powder. Anything that doesn't stick to that ink gets put right back into that jar. And then I'm using my embossing tool to melt that powder. And once that's ready, I set it aside to glue on later. Next step, I'm going to take another piece of that watercolor cardstock. Now this watercolor cardstock is cut at two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Um, I will have all the cutting sizes in the description down below, as well as all the products that I'm using listed and linked down in that description below. So if I miss saying something or you miss a measurement, it'll be listed down there. So my deer are stamped with a brown archival ink, and then I use the new Distress watercolor pencils, and I'm going to watercolor those images in. I like to use a watercolor brush that has water right inside the handle. So then if I wanna to go to the next color, I can just squeeze that water out onto a piece of watercolor, or sorry, onto a piece of paper towel, and I have a nice clean brush. I'm new to the watercolor pencils. I've just received them recently and have been playing with them recently. And I, for me, I have found the best way to get some decent color on my brush is to take that color right from the pencil itself. If you prefer, I know some people have been um, using pencil sharpeners and shaving them down and using an ink palette and putting those shavings in there and using that to watercolor, that would work as well. And when it gets to the point where these need to be sharpened, that's probably what I'll do with those shavings so they don't go to waste. But I found for me, putting that pencil right onto the paper resulted in lines and I haven't quite mastered that yet. So I like to take it right from the pencil and watercolor with it. Next, I'm taking a shimmer pen and a gold gel pen. I'm just adding some details to these reindeer. In my mind, they're the reindeer for Santa's sleigh, so I'm just putting some shimmer on their antlers and then adding some gold reins to them. The last step, I thought that reindeer looked a little bit like they were floating, so I'm just taking some light blue and I'm just adding some snow beneath them as well as a bit of a shadow just to make it sure, look like they're standing on the ground and not like I said, floating in the air. Once it's all watercolored, I wanna make sure that everything is completely dry before we glue it onto our card. These two squares go in the center slots for the card. So I glue those into place. You'll see I have four rectangles, two on the top, two on the bottom, that right now are just the plain card base. I will be adding some printed cardstock to that, and those are measuring one and three eighths by two and seven eighths. Once again, those will be listed in the description down below. So if you miss that or wanna know what it is, it'll be down there. So those get glued into place. All of these measurements for these pieces are an eighth of an inch smaller than those areas, and that's just going to allow for the card to fold smoothly as we're working through this. So our front of our card is pretty much done. I just added a little bit of red stickles to the front deer there, and I'm gonna let that completely dry before we go on to our next panel. So now that panel is completely dry, I have two more pieces of the watercolor cardstock here. Once again, those are two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. I'm taking my embossing pad and the snowflake stamp from this one of the stamp sets that I'm using and I'm stamping those images and I'm stamping, or sorry, I'm embossing them with some silver embossing powder. Again, I'm very generous with that powder. I wanna make sure all of that ink is completely covered. Anything that doesn't stick to that ink gets put right back into the container so there's no waste. And then I'm using my embossing tool to melt that powder. 
once it's melted. I'm taking a variety of different blues and I'm gonna create a bit of a sky going from light to dark. I've flipped my papers around so the lighter part is going to end up being at the bottom of the card. But as you see me painting it, it is um, at the top right now. So some of these pencils are new and haven't been used yet. So I haven't been getting a lot of color off of the ones that I hadn't used yet. And you can see that I changed my brush. For this background, I'm using just a watercolor brush. I'm not using the one that has the water in the handle. So I have a little pot there with water. I just found for this background, it just gave me a lot more water as well as the ability to just build up that ink on my brush in order to watercolor with it. The first coat with this paint isn't very, very dark because I have a whole lot of water and not as much paint on that brush. But as I go back over it, and you'll see that in a second, those the water that's on that those pencils have kind of sunk in a little bit and I'm able to get a lot more water right off that brush. So it's a lot darker, a lot more vibrant. And because we stamped those snowflakes on ahead of time, that is resisting that paint. But what you could do if you wanted, you could paint the background, let it completely dry, and then stamp and emboss the snowflakes. You'll get the exact same result. I just tend to emboss it first. If you wanted your snowflakes to be white, you could do white embossing powder. Or if you wanted them to be white, you could do clear embossing powder before painting. And once again, that, that embossing would resist the paint and your snowflakes would be white. So a few options for you there. Now I'm taking some foundry wax and a splatter brush and I'm just splattering that foundry wax over the background. Sorry, this part of the video looks weird. I accidentally hit the time lapse button. So I have it slowed down here, but it does still look a little bit weird compared to the rest of it. That foundry wax is very easy to clean up. Just spray a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and it wipes right off. Once the foundry wax splatters are completely dried, you can use an embossing gun and heat them and that's going to let that leafing come to the surface and it creates some beautiful flecks there. So for my trees, I took the tree from that same stamp set, used the embossing powder and I'm just using some green embossing glaze to emboss them there just so we have a night sky with snow over top of the forest. Now I am gluing those pieces into that card there or into, into my card. The two or the pieces along the two sides, along the left side and the right side, are also four pieces, sorry, two pieces that are one and three eighths by two and seven eighths. And then there's four squares that are one and three eighths by one and three eighths. Once again, that'll be listed down below. I decided it needed just a little bit of words on there to kind of tie in some of the red that's in the print that I'm using. The printed papers that I'm using are from a smaller pad, so the scale of them is down, is smaller than say picking out 12 by 12 papers. Most of the time, if you use smaller papers, the scale of them is down, but they have some beautiful red foil on them and I wanted to tie that into this print. So I'm taking some red cardstock, stamping a sentiment on there and embossing it. Now the stamp set that I use this from is a different stamp set. It's um, Tiny Text Christmas. So it has a lot of different Christmas wintery sentiments on it that are in a small script version. And I quite like that for this particular use. I'm just cutting these down so that I don't have a lot of the red on the outside. And then I'm gonna cut that sentiment apart and scatter it on my background here. And it's just gonna tie this picture to the background or the printed papers that I'm using. Once these pieces are cut down, they are gonna be glued onto that image of the card. I'm using Distress Collage Medium to glue them down and they do need to be glued down flat. We don't wanna add any extra dimension to the card because that'll affect the way it folds. I've also used the Distress Collage Medium to glue the printed pieces and our watercolored pieces to the card as well but I did use some Tombow multi, Mono Multi for gluing our card together. I like it for that just because it has a bit of a thinner consistency, as well as the fact that I was able to move the pieces a little bit better. Um, and it has a little bit longer drying time than the Distress Collage Medium. For the third panel to our card, you can see me taking one of our watercolor pieces and I'm cutting it down. So it was two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths and I cut it in half 
so that it ended up being two and seven eighths by one and three eighths. And then the second one, I cut the little excess off and that is also gonna be two and seven eighths by one and three eighths. This panel goes in the center of the card and you'll see it in a minute. I'm just letting the other part dry while I'm getting this prepped and ready. So I've taken the holly branch from that stamp set and I stamped it all over. And then I took another sentiment from my little sentiment set and stamped and embossed that one with gold. And I'm cutting that one down and it says deck the halls with boughs of holly. So it ties in with those holly branches. I figured we might as well utilize our time and get things ready for the next panel while the second one is drying. So I'm taking a variety of different green watercolor pencils and I'm coloring in the holly and I've moved back to my watercolor brush that has the water in the handle. This one is a little bit more of a detailed brush so I can get into some smaller spaces with it. Whereas my other brush is more for doing larger images or larger backgrounds. So I'm working for dark, from dark to light with watercoloring these pieces in and I've got three different shades of green. The first one is fairly yellow and you're only gonna see a tiny little bit once we're completely done, but it just adds some highlight areas to some of those holly branches. After doing the light one, I go in with the medium one and these stamps, you kind of see the way they're drawn. They have a little bit of a shadow on them naturally. So I just follow the way those stamps are made and choose where my shadow is based on where the little hash marks or whatever are in the stamp image. It makes it really, really easy to decide where to put the darker colors because the stamp is already naturally darker in some areas than others. Once the middle color is done, I'm gonna take the darkest of the greens and I'm going to put that in the darkest areas. And then I'm going to let that dry. And then I take a red watercolor pencil and do my berries with that. Now I realize I am going through this fairly quickly, mainly because I wanted the video to be a reasonable length. Um, if something isn't clear, please put a comment down in the comments and ask a question. I'm happy to answer questions. Like I said, I just wanted to shorten the length of this video so it wasn't too long for everyone, but I also realize that I'm going quite fast through it. Now the printed papers that I'm using with this card, like I said, are from a smaller paper pad that I have, but you could also take some of your stamps or even the stamps in the sets that I'm using for this and create your own background papers. There's nothing to say that you have to use pre-printed papers. The other thing you can do is some of these sentiments on here, you could put those on some of those outer pieces or the printed pieces as well. So the sky's the limit really when it comes to what you can do with this card. And like I said before, this has got a Christmas theme to it, but you could do it for virtually any occasion. If you have someone that loves to fidget, loves to play with things, this would be perfect for a birthday card for them or even for little kids. They find it fascinating flipping through these cards and I've done a kid version of this in the past and it went over really, really well. So use your creativity and have fun with it. So you saw me flip that last panel and those two side pieces are from the previous panel. So those don't get glued on on this panel. The only printed paper for this one that you need is four one and three eighths by one and three eighths inch squares. And those get two to the top and two to the bottom. So the image piece is in the center and it is split. It does open up to our next panel. So once again, I'm using the Distress Collage Medium to glue them in place. And you may have noticed I like to use an acrylic block. I've got a six by six acrylic block here that's fairly heavy, that's got some weight to it. And I like to use that to hold pieces down so that I can do other things while that is being, that glue is setting. Um, I tend not to like to sit and hold things down. So while that is drying, I'm just taking my sentiment strip and I'm cutting it down so that I can scatter it along that particular piece there. So the first one that I'm gluing down says deck the halls. The width bows is gonna be split into two between the two panels. At first I was gonna do it in one piece, but in the end I decided to cut it in half. And then the last piece is going to say of holly. And like I said, I like to use Distress Collage Medium for this 
because it glues it down flat. The other reason I like to use it is because if I happen to put a little bit too much glue in an area and some of it seeps out, it's going to dry completely clear and completely matte. You're never going to know that that glue is there. And I really like that feature with it. There's, we all have times where we have a little bit of excess glue and it seeps out. And there's nothing more frustrating than being able to see where that glue is and you didn't notice ahead of time to get rid of it. So I like with the Distress Collage Medium that if some is there and once it's dry, you don't even know that it's there. You can't tell. So the last piece here is of Holly. The other thing I'm going to add to this panel, I felt that it was fell a little bit flat with the foiled paper around the outside. So I'm going to take some red stickles and I'm just going to add some red stickles to the little berries and then I'm going to let that dry completely. It just adds a nice touch of sparkle to it. It doesn't need a lot, just a little tiny um, dot and the berries for these particular holly leaves are actually really quite tiny, but it just added a touch of sparkle to it that looks really, really nice. So now we are ready for our last panel. So I have a Santa stamp here. I'm going to stamp it with black permanent ink. You make sure you use black, or sorry, make sure you use permanent ink with water coloring. You don't want to have any ink that can possibly move around when you add the water. So for this card, I'm using some archival ink. You could also use stays on ink that would work as well. And then I'm taking those watercolor pencils and I'm coloring in that Santa image. Now, as I said before, I'm using watercolor pencils. They're a new product. They were only released in the last couple months and they come in three different sets. And in each of those sets, the colors are mixed up and varied. I've taken my sets and I've just put them in color order so that I have all the blues together, all the greens together, all the reds together, that sort of thing. Um, I just like to be able to see it that way so that I know how many different blues I have to choose from and whatnot. But you could absolutely just use one set. Each of the sets tends to have a variety of colors. And that's actually how I started. I chose one set, just tested them out. Was pretty sure that I was gonna love them, but um, I wanted to make sure and attempt to be responsible. So I've got my Santa here all completely watercolored. I'm gonna glue them on before he dries. So I'm using that Distress Collage Medium and putting him where I want him to go. And then I have four pieces of printed cardstock here that I'm putting on the sides. Those are all one and three eighths by two and seven eighths. And I'm just putting those so that I can have them drying while I'm doing the rest of it. Now you notice I dropped that piece of cardstock. A little bit of glue did go on the front of that printed paper. But like I said, you'll never know that it's there because it'll dry completely matte and to completely clear. Now for this tree, I'm trying a technique that I saw um, recently online and I liked the result that that person had with it. I didn't have the same luck with it, but I did want you to see this. I think I used too much water with it. So if you do try this technique, um, just be easy on the water. I like the idea of it and I've done direct to stamp with markers and stuff like that and I really quite like the look of it. I think I have to play around with this technique just to try it out a little bit. For my um, liking it ended up being a little bit too watery and so you can see where at the stamp there there was just too much water so like I said I'm going to try it again but I did want to keep it in here so that you could know that that is a technique that you can do and that you could try but be careful with the water. In the end, I take out my stamp platform and I'm just going to stamp it. So I've got three different green ink pads here that I'm using. I've got bundled sage, I've got peeled paint, and I've got forest moss. The first color I'm going to stamp with is the bundled sage and I'm stamping that entire tree with that. Then I'm gonna take the peeled paint and I'm only stamping or I'm only inking the stamp about two thirds, the bottom two thirds. Then I take a blending brush and I just brush that out just to soften the edges. And then I take the forest moss and I'm only inking the bottom third of the stamp and then using that same blending brush just to soften those edges. And then I get a tree that has some color variation from light to dark. And for this particular project, I liked the look of that a lot better. So I'm going to glue that piece down and let that start drying. 
while those pieces are busy drying, I'm going to take my printed paper, and this particular paper happens to be of presents. So I'm going to take some of those presents and I'm going to cut them out with some detail cutting scissors. If you don't happen to have the same printed paper, you could just use some printed papers that have small images on them and just cut rectangles and squares and stuff like that and create your own gifts that way. These ones happen to have bows already on them, but I actually go back after this and enhance them with that same gel pen and the shimmer pen that I used before on the reindeer. But if you're just using some plain printed paper, take some pens, some gel pens, and enhance them. Use some metallic pens, add a little bow, whatnot, and just make it sparkle that way. So I have another sentiment here, and this one here says Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. I also cut it into chunks just like the last one and I'm scattering it on the piece just to fill in some of those open spaces there. And then I let that dry completely. Once those are all dry, I'm taking some stickles and I'm adding some stickles to Santa's coat. Now my jar happened to be a little bit jammed so I just took a thumbtack and put it in the opening and that frees everything up and it was flowing a lot better after that. I just like the fur when it has a little bit of a sparkle to it. And then I'm also taking those gel pens and just adding some sparkle to the presents as well as the tree. So here I'm just adding a little bit of garland to my tree. And this gel pen, it's a sparkle, but it's very, very subtle. So it's not in your face sparkle. It just adds a nice shimmer to wherever you color it. After I did that, I'm taking my gold gel pen and I added a star to the top of the tree and then just some circles for some ornaments. Once again, these are quite subtle. They're not a huge difference in color from the tree, but when you tilt it in the light, then you see them a little bit better. If you wanted them to be a little bit more noticeable, you could take some glossy accents and put a drop of glossy accents on each one afterwards. I was fine with them just out of the bottle or out of the pen. Next, I'm taking that red stickles that I used on the reindeer's nose earlier, and I'm adding some ornaments to the tree. Once again, these are stickles. They take a little bit longer to dry, just depending on how much you use. So you wanna make sure to let this dry before you start flipping through your card. The last thing I took was some glossy accents and added it to Santa's glasses. Now I did let that completely dry before flipping through the card. It looks like I did it immediately, but I let the, everything completely dry. And there we have our finished card, which is super fun to play with, super fun to flip through. And it's kind of addicting keeping on flipping through there. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this card. It is a fun one to create and it's a fun one to give and receive as well. I appreciate your time. Have a great day.